These are math facts that sound fake, but are actually true. The number i is the square root of negative 1, and the complex number system is made up of numbers a plus bi, where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. Any number with a equals 0 and b non-zero is called purely imaginary, and any number with b equal to 0 is called real. But while i is completely imaginary, i to the power of i is a real number. Specifically, i to the i is equal to e to the negative pi halves. A very interesting complex number fact is known as Euler's identity, which says that e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0, or e to the i pi equals negative 1. Mathematical Taoists prefer to use tau equals 2 pi and write this in the form of e to the i tau equals 1 and think that this is even more awesome for some reason. But regardless of which one you use, this equation relates some of the most important mathematical constants around. Some numbers are big, but some numbers are just so unbelievably gigantic that they're hard to even comprehend. For example, a thousand seconds is just under 17 minutes. A million seconds is about 11 and a half days. A billion seconds is 31.7 years. That's longer than most YouTube viewers have been alive. Though nothing can make you feel quite as old as thinking about how many billions of seconds you've experienced. But think of it like this. There are 8 billion people on the planet, and that's more than three times the number of seconds that a typical person lives, assuming a 70 to 80 year life expectancy. And the species Homo sapiens are estimated to have been on Earth for about 300,000 years, and so haven't even been around for 10 trillion seconds, which is about 317,000 years. But that pales in comparison to the U.S. national debt, which is, as of the making of this video, closing in on $33 trillion. That means that the United States has accrued over $3 of debt for every second that humans have existed on the planet. But even that's tiny, though, as it takes 7.25 quadrillion seconds, or 230 million years, for the Sun to complete one orbit around the Milky Way galaxy. That means that the last time the Sun was in this region of the galaxy, the dinosaurs were just starting to evolve. In fact, the Sun hasn't even completed 20 revolutions around the galaxy since the Earth was formed 4.5 billion years ago. But all those numbers are just a drop in the bucket compared to the number Google. The biggest number we mentioned so far was in the quadrillions. One quadrillion is 10 to the 15th power, or one with 15 zeros after it. A Google is 10 to the 100th power, or a one with 100 zeros after it. This number is larger than the number of atoms in the observable universe, which is estimated to be between 10 to the 78th power and 10 to the 82nd power. Now those numbers are big, sure, but they aren't even close to the number of distinct images that a 9x16 1080p 24-bit TV screen can make, which is 10 to the 10 to the 7.175... Eh, it's like a 1 with about 15 million zeros behind it. But that number is incomprehensibly small in comparison to a Google Plex, which is 10 to the Google power, or a 1 with a Google zeros behind it. Remember, a Google was bigger than the number of atoms in the observable universe. That means that this number has several orders of magnitude more zeros in it than the observable universe has atoms, meaning that it is completely impossible to even write this number down using all the particles in the known universe then none of these numbers come even close to the size of infinity. In fact, there are essentially just as many numbers after a Googleplex as there are numbers after one. On the other side of mathematics is geometry and topology. If you take a strip of paper and glue the edges together, you get a nice cylinder with two well-defined sides. But if you twist the paper before you glue it, you get a fascinating shape called a Mobius strip. This shape, incredibly, has only one side. That's right, if you start your finger at one point and move around the object, you'll touch every part of its surface without ever having to go over an edge. And its cylindrical cousin has a similar property. If you take a cylinder and join the ends of it in opposite directions to each other, you get what's called a Klein bottle. This closed surface without boundary has only one side. That is, its inside is its outside and vice versa. This cannot be correctly represented in 3D either, and so every 3D representation has to include some weird self-intersection, which doesn't actually happen. Being one-sided, this also means that a Klein bottle encloses no volume, similar to how a measuring cup doesn't contain liquid since you can pour it out. And if that's not enough to make your brain melt, consider an algebraic idea related to the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that the sum of the squares of the lengths a and b of the two legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the length c of its hypotenuse. Algebraically, this becomes the well-known equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. There's an infinite number of integer solutions to this equation where each of a, b, and c are integers. For example, 
3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, or 9 plus 16 is 25. Or 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared, which is 25 plus 144 is 169. Or 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared, or 49 plus 576 equals 625, and so many more. But what happens if we don't use squares, but use cubes or fourth powers? In other words, what happens if we consider the equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n, where n is a natural number greater than or equal to 3? Well, in 1637, Pierre de Fermat wrote in the margins of his copy of Arithmetica by Diophantus of Alexandria that for the equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n, where n is greater than or equal to 3, there are no integer solutions at all. He also said that he found a remarkable proof of this fact, but that he didn't have the room to write it there in the margins. But after he died, no one was ever able to find any evidence that he ever wrote that proof down, and this theorem has become commonly referred to as Fermat's last theorem. For the next 360 years, despite mathematicians' best efforts, no one was ever able to prove or disprove it. But finally, in 1995, Andrew Wiles was able to crack it and prove that Fermat was right. The complication of Wilde's proof, which is over a hundred pages long, and the centuries that it took for a correct proof to be found has led many mathematicians to think that Fermat probably didn't actually have a correct proof after all. Sticking with algebra, most of us are probably familiar with the quadratic formula. This mainstay of high school algebra will solve any general quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and has a catchy way of singing this to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. It's probably not surprising that formulas to solve general cubic and general quartic polynomial equations have also been discovered, but Niels Hendrik Abel and Paolo Ruffini proved that it was impossible to find such a formula for a general degree 5 or higher polynomial equation. Everest Galois later developed what is now called Galois theory, which makes it easier to see why this fact is true. Tragically, Abel and Galois both died incredibly young, Abel at 26 and Galois at 20. Abel died from tuberculosis and Galois died after being shot in a duel shortly after being released from prison due to his political activism. Rest in peace to both mathematical masters. If you met a random stranger down the street and asked them what their birthday was, assuming that they aren't just totally freaked out by your question and told you, there would be a 1 out of 365 chance that the two of you share the same birthday. Just the month and day, not the year. That's less than a 0.3% chance. But believe it or not, it only takes 23 people in a room for there to be more than a 50% chance that two of the people in that room share a birthday. In fact, if there's 41 people in the room, there's more than a 90% chance that two of them have the same birthday. And it only takes 70 people for there to be a more than 99.9% .9 chance that two of them have the same birthday. Lastly, a standard deck of playing cards has 52 cards in it. That means there are 52 factorial distinct ways of shuffling that deck. That's more than 8 times 10 to the 67th power, or an 8 with 67 zeros after it. But there have only been 4.34 times 10 to the 17 seconds since the Big Bang. This differential is so massive that assuming a well-shuffled and hence randomly shuffled deck, it is practically impossible that any deck of 52 playing cards has ever been shuffled the exact same way twice. So that was math facts that sound fake but were actually true. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a part two. About a week after this video post, we'll post another video explaining the math found here that we didn't have the time to explain in this video. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to Scholar Sauce. If this video gets over a thousand likes, I'll record a short of me singing the quadratic formula to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. We'll see you next time.